In this episode of Animal Academy, Jeremy hitches a ride in the high country with a team of Clydesdales. Vet Jeff checks up on Angus, a Labrador with a nose complaint. And homeless fish. Angie, the aquatic nanny, is here to help. Hi, I'm Sarah Ulmer. And I'm Jeremy Maguire. And welcome to Animal Academy. We're here today with two griffons. We've got Jamie here, who's three and a half, and cruisy old Ned, who's eight. Now, griffon bruxellois is actually their full name, and it sounds like a bit of a mouthful, but it really just means from Brussels, which is where their breed originated from. And their ancestors were stable dogs, whose job it was to guard the stables from rats and other rodents. So from Brussels to Massey, New Zealand's only veterinary school where Micah Jensen is training to be a wildlife vet. There are 400 veterinary science students at Massey University. On campus, there is a specialist wildlife clinic where the students can do residency postings. Micah Jensen is one of these, working towards her master's degree, which will take a total of eight years. I was always the kid with the jar of tadpoles and the ducklings and donkeys and whatever else, you know, we, we always um, had a lot of animals around growing up and just loved them. My family moved overseas to Indonesia. I had exposure to a lot of exotic animals and often animals that were from, taken from the wild and so forth. You have no ability to help them, like you try to, and I'd always pick up the sickest animals I could find off the side of the road or out of the markets and things and, and try and raise them up and make them better. And it was such an enriching experience to be able to help an animal. Dealing in that situation really made me motivated to get into conservation and giving, giving animals a voice, really. Micah's work involves her getting yeah. hands-on experience alongside the regular team, tending to at least 10 animals a day. Her first patient is an albatross that was found washed up on the beach. She basically arrived completely flat. This albatross is covered in sand. It looks like it got bold in the surf. We're just making sure he's rehydrated. We're giving him antibiotics. Micah is working with clinic director Brett Gartel to fit the albatross with jandals to protect his feet from bumblefoot while he's in the clinic. He had that little hole in his webbing uh, when he arrived. But over on this toe here, we've just got the beginning of bumblefoot starting already. It's just basically pododermatitis, which is when ulceration, it's, it's ulceration of the foot pads, and they can get um, little plugs of um, pus and infection, and then it can spread to the joints, and they basically can't walk, and it's very painful for them to walk. With his jandals fitted, it's time for a fishy treat. Next on Micah's list is a simple surgery on a little blue penguin. Well, uh, I'm about to do a, a surgery on a flipper and a penguin, which is basically debriding a wound. So what I'm doing is just picking off the outside of dead tissue. This just makes it um, a, f a fresher site so it'll heal itself. Being able to help animals daily oh, is what keeps Micah very happy with her career choice, despite the training costs involved. To pay off my student loan, I'd have to pay my entire salary for the next two and a half years to pay it off. But at the moment, I'm doing what I love to do, which is work with wildlife, and I'll probably just pay it off bit by bit over many, many years. <laughs> Micah's work involves tending to many kiwis. This is Grange. Grange is a little kiwi who came in with a, a stone impaction in his gizzard. Usually they have one or two stones in their gizzard, but for him, he's just overindulged and eating all of these stones and now we're trying to pass them through so we're just about to give him some medicine that will help to flush all of that through his gut. You do tend to you know have a lot of kiwis which we're really privileged to have but each one of them is quite individual you know like this little guy is very squealy and each of them is really their own, their own person so hang on a minute hang on oh yeah I know I really like seeing the improvement. So this little guy came in and he was really flat, you know, could barely walk, was feeling really sick. And now we've got him quite vocal and he's improving and that's just wonderful to see. It gives you a really mm. good feeling when you, you think you're actually um, making a big difference. I know, mate, I know. See how they like to burrow? Do you see that? So this is sort of a rugby ball kind of hold that we use where if they feel like they can tuck their head under your armpit and you can restrain the body and also trying to cover their head so that they won't stress out too much. But the hardest part with these guys, I think, is um, not 
talking to them and giving them names because they're wild and we want them to go back to the wild. We don't want to habituate them, but often they're so cute you'll hear us get out the occasional squeak, which we shouldn't. We're quite excited because there's stones in this poop, which means that the treatment's working, we're flushing those stones out. So we get excited about strange things around here. I'm not in it for the big bucks. It's, um, it's a, just a brilliant experience and it's really fulfilling. It's so inspiring to be around them. You can be having a really crappy day for a number of reasons, tired, you know, working hard, something like that, or something going on at home. You come into work and you're just around some pretty amazing animals and that's really uplifting. <laughs> Training to become a vet takes a long time. Some great work being done there by Micah and the team. And our next story is about someone who's into taking care of animals too. She's Angie, the aquatic super nanny. In all the country, there is only one person doing fish and aquatics rescue, Angie Scanlon. Well, I've been rescuing fish since I was a kid. Um, always bringing home tadpoles and buckets and chucking them in the bath at home and stuff like that. Five children, two dogs, two cats, chickens, and a thousand aquatics later, she's still going strong. And the word has got out. Through Pets on the Net, I've got an advert in there, and that's how people contact me, also through the SPCA. These fish came to me last week. Their pond fall into bits and so it wasn't holding water anymore so now we're going to take them and put them into a pond. They've got to stay in the bathtub to make sure that they're all healthy and stuff before I put them in with the other fish and these guys are all good, they're all healthy as so yeah they're ready to go. This is where I'm going to release the fish, it's a little cafe named Flax up in the Waitakeries. I maintain and clean the pond here so this is where most of my rescue fish come and live, live out the rest of their days and this is where these guys are going to stay, their new home. A lot of people don't know what to do, if they don't want their fish, what do you do with it? And there's the fish. They'll go let it go in a pond like Western Springs and you can't really let fish go in creeks and stuff because it's not good for the environment, you know, it unbalances all the other native fish and stuff. I'm here to be able to rescue the fish and then I know exactly where I can rehome them. So it's a good feeling. It's cool. Angie also looks after animals while their owners are away. She calls herself the aquatic nanny. This is Benny. He comes to stay a couple of times a year. He's been coming here since, or oh, about two or three years now, since he was about this big, tiny, and he's grown quite a bit. And he's really cool. He's, I'm pretty sure he knows who I am. Angie also breeds aquatics to sell. Her most popular are her fire-bellied newts. I sell them on Trade Me, well, the babies. These are all my adults. They're really cool because they live in the water and they also come out and they can live on land as well. I've also got axolotls in this tank, Mexican walking fish. I accidentally breed them, I didn't mean to, but they just started reproducing and so I was sort of thrown in the deep end of breeding. The axolotls are really bizarre creatures. They live in their tadpole state their whole life, only animal like that that can do that and they can also breed while they're still in their tadpole state. There is certainly a lot of work involved in keeping all these aquatics. One day I'll spend the whole day just cleaning the, all the tanks in the fish room and then another day I'll spend the whole afternoon cleaning all the ponds up the back and then other days it'll be there'll be nothing to do then all of a sudden I'll get a call and I'll have to go and pick up a fish or something so you just never know from one day to the next. I really enjoy looking after animals and I'm a sucker as well. If someone's got an animal they don't want, I'll take it. All the animals live in harmony together. It's good, it's really satisfying, I love it. After the break, Jeff takes a look at Angus's cracked nose. <laughs> 